Um, has anyone seen... Um, I'm not going to wang on about my book, right? Don't worry about that. Um, so, um, um, uh, has anyone seen Billy Elliot? Oh, good crowd. You have. Um, do you remember the scene with the letter? Yes. Does, it, does anyone actually remember it? <laughs> okay, so basically, my daughter, I uh, was in Billy Elliot, and she played the mum, Missy Wilkinson, and there's this bit where it's really sad, uh, and all the parents in the room cried at the school play, um, and it's when uh, the mum um, has written a letter to know she's dying of cancer to her son, and then the teacher reads it out. It's really sad, genuinely really sad. And I got a letter about 10 minutes ago. It's not from my mum. In fact, it's fallen out of my pocket. Anyway, no, here it is. Right, this is from, this is from Matt. Did, did you write this, Matt? Oh, yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah. He wrote a letter. I thought it was beautiful. It was a digital conference, and I'm getting a letter, right? And it, it smells nice, <laughs> and uh, it's embossed, and my, my finger can run over the embossment. As, as, it, as I do it, it's reminding me of the conference, right? It's creating a connection between my brain and this conference that helps me remember it. And I look at his something called, does anyone remember handwriting? If you don't, it's <laughs> here, right? So I can tell something about Matt. John, hyphen, confidence start, right? Thank you for sharing your fascinating, they'll be the judge of that, um, and inspiring, they'll be the judge of that, story on stage, at Wired Smarter, with a kind of, it's sort of got an exclamation mark, but he's not convinced. Uh, so, so a little bit of an exclamation mark, all the best, Matt crossing across the T. So I really, really love this idea. And it reminded me of when my, oh shit, this is my, my last time I did a conference about 18 months ago. My dad had literally, I'd just left, this isn't a cheap trick, it's just true. Um, I'd left my dad who just died or was dying just literally on his last breath. And I decided, do I go and keep my commitment to speak at this conference or not? I said, son, there's a reason why I'm going to this conference and leaving my dad who's in A&E, no, no, not in intensive care, and all the technology, all the wired technology in the world hadn't saved him. In fact, I reckon it had partly killed him, but we'll come back to that. Um, and I did a conference. It was a conference about how the tech businesses were working in this conference with the medical device businesses, with the insurance businesses, to make sure they work together to implant devices in us that allow us to live longer lives. And that was what the conference was about. And it made me a bit concerned because the places where people live the longest lives, the richest lives, as you probably know, are called what? It's a colour. What's your name? Ilan. Ilan. Yeah. Round of applause, please, for Ilan. Blue zones, blue zones. Very good, very good. Very good. Um, they're called blue zones, right? And the World Health Organization and the United Nations identify them. Now, these are places like Acciaroli in Italy, where... They have no medical devices. I don't think they've even got a GP, right? But what they do is they, they eat a lot of rosemary, anti-inflammatory. Uh, they have positive relationships with the people around them uh, that are not dictated by staring down at a screen. And those positive relationships have an incredible impact on their immune system and on their gut microbes and their longevity. It's very unlikely we're going to solve the length of deterioration of all of our organs to live beyond uh, 100, 120, right? So, and even those last 10 years, that one organ might be alive, but everything else will be slowly dying, right? So I'm really convinced that technology is brilliant. I managed to get here in a car and everything. Um, but I just wanted to talk about how in writing the book, I've got some concerns and some questions and some suggestions. And that's all it is, right? I'm not here to kind of say that, you know, we should go back to living in the bush. I'm just saying, just raising some questions. Um, and my friend called Hans, um, he, does anyone know Juno Therapeutics? It's the, it's the biggest ever listing of a biotech business ever in America and therefore in the world. And then he sold it for $6 billion, right? And he found he, it was the most promising immunotherapy, like you're training your white blood cells to kill uh, cancer cells technology out there. And I had a great plan. I'm going to look at you because I like you. I had a great plan. And I thought Hans was going to save the human by solving cancer. And in the biggest ever biotech listing, Juno, he has saved one, solved one form of um, leukemia. And that's fucking huge, right? It's fucking huge, but it's also narrow. 
He's also then started a business, he was bored, um, early diagnostic with blood, with cancer. And he said, John, I said, I'm so jealous of you, Hans. You are saving the human. That's what I want to do. That's the purpose of Leon. You're amazing, Hans. I love him. And he's not a cock. You know when a cock makes money? It's annoying. Um, um, but he's not a cock. And I'm like, oh, I love you. you mean, now you're a billionaire. Lovely guy. Even better. Thank God some rich people aren't. So that was really good. That was all good. And he said to me, you know what, John? I'd rather be doing what you're doing. I said, what do you mean? Um, what do you mean? I've, I, need, I need to lose a few pounds. And he said, no, no, I need, I, you should be telling people to exercise and eat some vegetables. Because all the work I've done on the biggest ever biotech listing in America, and all the work I'm doing with my early diagnosis blood, I'd rather people eat some vegetables than do some running. Without a fucking Fitbit, right? <laughs> so... That was the intro that I wasn't going to do. That's not even my fucking speech. Right, OK, right, OK. So um, let me work on the book. Oh, apparently I have to say something subtle to the person doing the slides, which is, can I see my book now? <laughs> right, OK, right, OK. This, I'm not, as I say, I'm not going to talk about this much. The only reason I wanted to mention it is that it, it has the answer to man's fundamental question. That's the only reason that I was going to slip it in. <laughs> Um, so what does it say? Right, what it says, and this is totally applicable to digital, not shoehorned in because I'm on some book tour where they say you've got to engineer your book to a digital audience. It's actually fundamental, and which is this. It says we've come to associate winning with fighting. Fight cancer. Fight for your love. Fight for what you believe in. The war metaphor is the primary metaphor, thank you, Sun Tzu, this is not his fault. He, he didn't ask for it. Thank you, Sun Tzu, the art of war. War has become the preeminent metaphor that we use in business. Has anyone been in war? You bunch of cowardly bastards. You get out there. <laughs> Fight. No, you're, you're smart. You haven't been in war. Has anyone got any friends that have been in a war? What did they think of it? Not great. Shit, not great. <laughs> okay. <laughs> John Scott, who was an ex two para employee of ours, had to have so much light therapy, he, he had night terrors. So when he came to our house for winter well-being, it was winter. He had to sleep outside in a hammock half 250 metres away because his night terrors were so bad. So why do we use... Question for the, for the, for the class. Blue, anyone? Bueller? Oh, uh, no. Um, why do we use... How is war useful to us as a metaphor, as a way of conducting our everyday life in business. OK, in war, we're fighting, where's the customer? There's no customer in war. So what we end up doing instead is, in some Shakespearean mix-up, we end up targeting them. Because they're the enemy or something, or something. Oh, got confused. Right, so I genuinely have concluded that we've started to fight is it, where's that red slash green? I'm still green. I'll let you know when it goes amber. OK, so we, we are using fighting, and we assume that success and winning comes from fighting. Because we have to fight the enemy, kill the enemy. We have to have more aggressive business plans. So if you're in a budget meeting, and someone says, I'm going to have a more aggressive business plan, a more aggressive budget, everyone fucking claps, right? You can do it in Leon. You can say, we want a more aggressive business plan. And then, and then everyone will high-five, right? And then everyone will get down to the restaurant, and the manager will say, you know what, guys, we want, we're gonna, we've, I've convinced them we're going to have a more aggressive business plan. And, and everyone goes, yeah! More aggressive business plan. And then, and, then, and then the new woman who's just graduated or just left school goes, excuse me, what does that mean? Does it mean we drag the customers in by their hair? Right? <laughs> and, 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 then, and then the manager goes, no. Do you know what? I don't know what it means. I'm going to go back to the office and I'm going to ask them what it means, right? So, so my whole issue is our business should be about one human, Ottie, who's here, who's my executive assistant, um, used to work in Strand, and her policy for getting more sales, unbelievable. It was brilliant. It was be nice to the customers and tell, advise them what food they might want, right? <laughs> we, we recently had some... Um, we recently had some... Um, 
uh, agency in, right? Digital wacky tech agency. They said, we're going to slice your data, slice it this way, slice it that way. Uh, we're going to do ethnographic stuff. Woo, ethnographic work. We're going to do a behavioral science of a, and we're going to work out why people are coming to Leon. And my friend Chris, who's head of media, says, he leant across and went, I think it's because they're hungry. <laughs> Right, so I goes, no, no, no. he rang me that night. I goes, no, 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 no. I missed out the drinks. It's because they're hungry and thirsty. We've got a two-pronged thing we need to understand. So that was good. Anyway, so that was, that was Otty's crazy way of getting, uh, getting sales up. No, we don't want that. Anyway, so my, my belief is it's Amber. Right, okay, so my belief is this. Very quickly, I'll summarise the whole human thing, right? My belief is that man's fundamental journey is to regain wholeness synonymous with love. So people poo-poo love. They say, no, that's just some chemicals when you want to shag someone. <laughs> um, that's, that's not love, that's lust. It's this chemical. Well, turns out, in research in this book, and I do a martial art called Wing Chun, which is Bruce Lee's martial art. It's a form of Kung Fu. It's ancient and all that shit. It goes back to Taoism and Zen Buddhism and all that stuff. It comes from the Shaolin Temple in China. What it turns out, right, anyway, is that man's fundamental journey is to regain wholeness, to regain our right relationship with ourselves, our right relationship with each other, and our right relationship with the planet. Plato worked it out. That's what he said love was. Is anyone Jewish here? I mean, can you ask that, can't you? Yeah. Do, you know, do you know tikkun as a concept? Okay, I'll tell you. Uh, <laughs> you weren't concentrating. Um, so, basically, it's this idea that when God sent light, I think it's a made yuppie story, but bear with me, that when God sent light to the world, it was in vases, they shattered, and man's journey is to find the shattered bits of the vase and put them back together, right? So my book, what I wrote with Julian, is about the four doors of Wing Chun. Stop being unconscious and know yourself. That's the first door. The second door is connect with others. The third door is free yourself from the shit that you've kind of inherited that isn't you. Get rid of the, sh get rid of the viruses in computer terminology. Get rid of the shit apps that are slowing you down. Regain the real you. And lastly, it's about regaining wholeness. And that doesn't mean entering the world and realising it's all some soupy mess where everything's together. What it recognises, if you're an electron... You need a neutron and a proton to make the whole. But when Adam and Eve started naming the apple, separate from the branch, separate from the root, because humans love to control and separate, that we were creating separateness, separation, that doesn't really exist. Right, so all I'm saying is this. As we apply digital, do we want to return to Acciaroli, where there are no Fitbits, but like people have the longest lives? Or do we want to live in America, what I've just come back from, where every third advert is some fear-based medical, pharmaceutical or medical device business. So before... Yeah, thanks! Yeah! <laughs> you and me. <laughs> oh. Um, everyone else can go. Do you mind if... Anyway, um, anyway so... <laughs> okay, so basically, uh, that's just my question, right? So my friend Wendy, who I saw about at the start of the book, she uh, was uh, giving 5LM acupuncture... It's red. 5LM acupuncture to... Um, someone who runs an AI business in the west coast of America. And she said, have you seen Terminator? And he's like, no, what's that? And she said, oh, oh, yeah, just buy the box set. <laughs> so that's where I'd like to end. Um, feel, free to, um, <laughs> feel free to have a little look at... Feel free, uh, the best way, if you're interested, to buy my book is to buy four or five on Amazon. It's digital, or you can go to a Leon restaurant and get one from a human like Otty, okay? It's out next week. Please buy it, because it will um, feed my ego. <laughs> um, so, yeah, well, anyway, thanks for having me. Uh, that's the end of my little speech. Thank you very much.